call to order meeting of the Greenwood Advisory Planning Commission for Monday, January, July 22nd, 2024. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from June 24th. I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Lexi to approve and a second by Mr. Walker. All in favor, please show by raising a hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 8-0. Uh, any special requests or continuances? For uh, special requests, we did have one. Um, Can we continuance, carry, we will do it. We'll carry it into in the, item the item itself. Item itself. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, are there any findings of fact? Seeing none. Old business, done. Old business from the floor. Seeing none. New business, PC 2024-018 Jiffy Loop. The petitioner is Andrew Barkasi. Is that right? Barkasi. That's not me. Good evening. This is not a public hearing. Seeing none, so we'll move on to the next This is not a public hearing. So, my name is Scott Barton. Oh, Scott Barton. Okay. Or Barkasi Surveying. 4,800 requests for Valley Road Suite O, Greenwood, 46142. Here representing Jeffy Blue uh, with their waiver requests. For uh, first one is a uh, request to uh, eliminate the six foot sidewalk along the east side of the property along the state road 135. And that's one that we will be asking for a continuance for tonight uh, after discussion with staff. Uh, while we'll also explore alternatives to uh, add that sidewalk onto the property. Specific date he wants to continue it to. Did, did you uh, talk about something oh, as so far as the date? So, um, as far as the date, we do like to just know for future dates if we're going to have room on the agenda. Uh, we do have a couple uh, meetings coming up next month. I believe it is the 12th and 26th. The 12th, the 12th, August 12th. Okay. Something we'll need to vote on. Uh, is there a motion to have a continuance for the sidewalk uh, waiver request? To August 12th. To August 12th. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Stambaugh. I'll second that. And second by Mr. Probst. All in favor, please show by raising a hand. All those, same sign. Motion carries, 8-0. Want to proceed with the other? Thank you. And our second uh, request is for a waiver from the uh, required 10-foot uh, uh, additional landscape uh, buffer uh, around the perimeter of parking. Uh, we're asking for that because of the, the size of the existing site. It's impractical to uh, add that additional on top of the five foot that's required. Five foot that's required, we are showing on the site plan, but uh, we are uh, in conjunction with working with putting the sidewalk onto the, onto the property. Uh, we're also looking into reducing uh, the five foot required uh, perimeter parking to three foot with, by adding a fence as well. Just to add some clarity, this is a long, State Road 135, uh, our landscaping requirements do give people the option to add a four foot, either wick, uh, wood or uh, iron or masonry uh, wall or fence to reduce the amount of landscaping that they have. Uh, but since it is along State Road 135, uh, there's an additional landscaping amount uh, of 10 feet that they are asking for a waiver for. The reduction from five feet to three foot with a fence does not necessarily need a waiver. That is in our ordinance. It is the additional 10 feet along 135. Um, staff is favorable of this request. They're dealing with an existing condition. Uh, this uh, Jimmy Loop is uh, a building addition that is triggered 
requirements to be done to the entire site. So the position of the building is fixed and there's not a lot of room uh, to do landscaping, uh, perimeter plantings. Uh, State Road 135 is not controlled by the city of Greenwood. Uh, ideally, we would uh, want them to have the sidewalk in the right of way. Uh, NDOT is not allowing them to place the sidewalk in the right of way. So that sidewalk is uh, needed to be placed on their site. Due to these constraints, uh, we're supportive of the uh, reduction in uh, the landscaping waiver that they have requested in their application. Okay, so in short, what you've got is state says no, you got to put the sidewalk further over, which gets into the landscaping area. And then you got the building, which is already there. And it just. Correct, correct. That's where I thought I understood it. I just want to make sure. I have a question on the size of the sidewalk that was uh, proposed. It's a four or five feet wide or six? Six. six? Yep, our Unified Development Ordinance calls for commercial buildings to have a six foot sidewalk. Uh, in our residential areas, you might see a five foot sidewalk. And that'll be debated at an August 12th meeting. Uh, they, they are looking at some, uh, they've been emailing and talking with staff about some solutions to the sidewalk. Uh, I do think that um, with some of our solutions, we will be able to fit the full six foot sidewalk in. Uh, but if the, there's something that they still need a waiver from or an area where they're not meeting our sidewalk requirements, it would need to come back to the planning commission on the 12th. Very good, thank you. Are there any, are there any uh, questions about the perimeter parking? I'm sorry. Parking lot landscaping. Yeah, I didn't finish. Would a fence would be a viable option in that location? I mean, it sounds like it's an option they could, they could do, but would it make sense in that location? I think it does. I think a good example is uh, the Walgreens by County Line Road. They kind of do something similar where they have a shorter masonry wall that is landscaped, um, is intertwined with it as a decorative wall. All, all the fences, options that we have for this reduction are decorative. Uh, and I do think having a, a fence really on either side would help with uh, pedestrian safety, uh, whether it's a fence between a pedestrian and 135 or a fence between uh, the, the proposed uh, garage addition with the cars there. I think just creating the, a separation uh, for safety. For safety and just to, uh, uh, it, it gives a nice feel when you're walking if you have uh, sidewalk furniture, uh, different mm -hmm. decorative fences, landscaping. And he has pull out, pull out traffic activities going on in the front. Yep, uh, they, staff doesn't have too much of a concern about that uh, just because they are starting at a dead stop uh, when they leave Jiffy Loop. Uh, they shouldn't be peeling out of there at full speed, especially with the sharp angle that they're going to have to uh, be turning. They've got about 27 feet or, or less to make that turn. So I don't think anyone's going to be speeding out of a, a, a Jiffy Loop. Uh, but just to provide that up, uh, physical separation from a commercial business, depending on where they place the sidewalk, which might be nice. I think the sidewalk is towards the right way side, uh, towards State Road 135. So either way, it would be uh, a decorative, yeah, decorative fence that I think would fit well here. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments about this? Not, I'll accept the motion on the uh, urban parking lot landscaping. Make a motion to approve the request for a waiver from the landscaping and buffering regulations regarding perimeter parking lot landscaping abutting a major thoroughfare. I move that the request of SCS construction for a waiver of the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance, Renewal Municipal Code 10, 
Article 25, Division 3, Generally Applicable Regulation, Section 10-03-06, Landscape and Buffering. Uh, J, Parking Lot, Landscaping, or one, Parking Lot, Landscaping, two, Perimeter Parking Lot, D, that specifies an additional 10 foot wide buffer area beyond the required five foot landscape area between the parking lot landscaping and edge of the right of way when the parking lot abuts a primary or secondary arterial to eliminate the additional 10 foot buffer area because the constraints of the existing site limit the ability to empty with landscape requirements and provide safe lanes for ingress, egress vehicles be approved and that the plan commission find that SES Corporation has met the criteria set forth by municipal code, Greenwood Municipal Code section 10-04-03K for the waiver for the reasons as forth as set forth in its request for the waiver and as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Price. Motion was by Mr. Milburn. Any last questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all those in favor, please show by raising a hand. All those, same sign. Motion carries eight zero. Thank you very much. Good luck with the project. We'll see you August 12th. Uh, the next item on the agenda is HWC Comprehensive Plan Update. Uh, the presentation. Uh, Gabe, do you want to do the introduction? I sure can. Uh, we have Adam Fever with HWC here to provide us with a comprehensive plan update. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work these last few months drafting the comprehensive plan based on what we've heard from a lot of our community outreach, whether it's the big ideas open house or the online surveys we've met with the schools uh, or Greenwood High School, their student council, uh, and had a couple pop up events. And uh, at this time, we're really looking to provide you all with an update. And Adam has that update for you here. Um, I do have an announcement later on that I'll mention now and for everyone in the, the audience. On Wednesday at the library at 6 p.m., uh, we'll be doing another presentation. I believe Adam can confirm. I believe it's a little longer and more in depth with a, uh, at the end of that presentation, it'll be a uh, time set aside for public feedback, uh, public comment, uh, discussion whether you feel it is uh, in alignment with our uh, with our vision or not, and then I do want to also promote our webpage plangreenwood.com. Uh, we do have a survey up right now. Uh, that survey is based on the draft comprehensive plan, so I encourage you guys to share that survey with friends, family, uh, local businesses, commuters. Uh, Anyone you know in Greenwood, we do want to hear their feedback. Uh, but without further ado, uh, here is Adam. Thanks, Gabe. Uh, yes, Adam Beaver, uh, community planner with HWC Engineering, 135 North Pennsylvania Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, appreciate your time this evening. Let's see if I can drive this. There we go. Um, so last year at the January 22nd meeting, which was a busy one for you all, um, so we were kind of at the end of that and kept it pretty brief, uh, so happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I'm going to run through this presentation, but as Gabe said, um, this is a, a, an update and abbreviated version of what we'll talk about on Wednesday. Uh, but since January, we had um, the Big Ideas Open House kind of share our preliminary recommendations with the community, ask for input. Since that time, um, we have made some uh, edits to the goals and strategies. We've added some, 
uh, change uh, or finesse some of the recommendations related to the focus areas that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, and then also had a couple of meetings with our steering committee um, to refine those revisions. Uh, ultimately, that resulted in the initial draft of the plan that we shared with staff and the steering committee for their review, um, have made a number of edits and still have some comments to address uh, before we will be creating what we call the um, adoption draft as we would then move into the adoption process. Uh, and But um, the, the public draft was shared uh, via the website um, a few weeks ago on July 5th. So in terms of what the draft plan looks like, um, it's organized into 11 chapters uh, with an appendix that includes a couple additional reports. Um, you know, executive summary, if you only have a couple minutes to look at this, that's where to go and ultimately orient you to uh, maybe the specific information you're looking for. Um, the introduction just gets into a little bit of the, you know, how and why the conference plan um, the background is a more in-depth investigation into the current conditions in the community um, and some of our exist or existing analysis. Uh, that's an abbreviated version of the existing conditions report that's in the appendix. Um, the fourth chapter there, community engagement. Again, a summary of uh, the engagement methods we use through the process and some of our key findings from that. Again, more information is in the appendix in the engagement report. Um, then the kind of main body of the uh, plan are um, what I would say six chapters, uh, five through 10 there. Four of those are based on the city's um, four pillars, infrastructure, quality of life, public safety, and economic development. We had a fifth um, because of the unique needs of the conference plan. That's the land use chapter. And then finally, um, the 10th there are, is the focus area chapter. So six areas in the community that we know need a little more in-depth investigation and more specific recommendations um, given their unique nature and or importance in the community. And then finally, the implementation chapter um, that gets to how to use the plan, uh, how to update it, maybe what to look for in terms of needing an update, as well as some of the key initiatives uh, that I'll talk about in a little bit. So in terms of the land use chapter, um, some of the key themes and what the goals are and strategies are organized around, encouraging infill and development, uh, infill development and reinvestment throughout the community uh, as we start to shift um, the focus uh, more from an outward growth approach to strengthening uh, some of the established neighborhoods of commercial districts. Um, certainly there are still opportunities for new growth to the east and south, so using those areas uh, to advance some of the goals found elsewhere in the plan, like more varied housing and increasing job opportunities, um, preserving Greenwood's natural features, uh, also understanding as development happens, how do those, how do we protect those natural features and get them incorporated into the design of future development, and then use, utilizing the future land use map and um, the focus area plans uh, to really help you all make decisions, help town council as you're evaluating development proposals, potential zoning changes, PUDs, um, and all the things like that. The future land use map um, is one of the key components, not only of, of obviously this chapter, but the comprehensive plan as a whole. Um, sorry, the legend gets a little small on this one, uh, but basically, um, you know, yellow is, uh, is, re is single family residential. Uh, much of that is existing neighborhoods. Uh, the orange on the map is what we're calling a um, mixed density residential. So that may be single family residential, certainly in areas where it uh, abuts existing neighborhoods, uh, but also the opportunity to increase, uh, increase um, housing diversity with things like duplexes, townhomes, patio homes, quads, things like that. Um, and then the darker brown being multifamily. So again, most of those uh, on the map are existing apartment uh, developments. Um, the commercial districts are the uh, red shades, as well as there's pink in the downtown area, uh, some other key properties that indicates mixed use. So where commercial and residential uses may be appropriately blended. Um, the, the straight red is the more typical commercial development. Again, much of that existing. And the purple areas are um, industrial. So many of your uh, warehouse is distribution, logistic operations, etc. Hauser. Um, on the south end of 31 there, 
and things like that. And then all the gray areas here are those focus areas that I've been talking about or mentioned several times, um, of which there are six. Um, a couple of things to point out here, knowing that um, as development happens east and, and southwest, there will be the need for uh, additional neighborhood serving commercial areas. Um, several of those will be uh, incorporated or could be incorporated into the focus area, certainly as we look at East Main Street and then the Wordsville corridor just east of 65, um, but also places it's a it's a little semi-circle there because we didn't want to get um, the, the planning area here uh, essentially stops at um, the county's tip district on Franklin Road, but so that's why you only see it on the west half of Franklin Road there, but at Wordsville and Franklin, that made a potential opportunity for a neighborhood commercial node, and then um, to the south at Honey Creek and uh, White Road, another little semicircle, and then also down in that area, you see um, kind of the perfect circle shape, uh, acknowledging a need for likely um, another community park in this area as it builds out. In terms of the infrastructure chapter, um, you know, focusing infrastructure improvements and extensions as a way to manage development, uh, and certainly the pace of development. Um, that's, you know, your, your sewer utility is your key leverage to, um, to guiding new growth. Uh, heard a lot, obviously, about the transportation network throughout the planning process, so addressing safety and congestion concerns certainly along local roadways, and then obviously um, the importance of in-dot managed roads to your network. So, uh, you know, certainly continuing the collaborative efforts that you all have uh, with in-dot. Using new development as that opportunity to expand the transportation network, certainly from a vehicular standpoint, but also bicycle and pedestrian connectivity. Um, as we, you know, heard about, and certainly you all know, challenges to east-west connectivity, Really, as new uh, development occurs, that being a, a, an opportunity um, to, if, if nothing else, get the right-of-way dedicated, but really, in most instances, get the, the roadway built as part of that development. And then um, beyond, you know, Greenwood's current orders, looking regionally, um, we talked to neighboring communities as part of this process uh, and working with them on that regional connectivity, again, from a transportation or from a, a vehicular standpoint, but also potentially transit routes, um, be that access Johnson County or uh, Indigo on the Northern portion of town. And from a trail standpoint, you know, one of the things we talked about a lot as part of the steering committee is um, Johnson County, the South side doesn't have a regional trail like the Monon uh, to the North or, um, the Vandalia Trail in Hendricks County. So how, do, how can we accommodate that or, or start to plan for that through this process? The thoroughfare map, uh, future thoroughfare map is one of the key components of this chapter. Um, as compared to the current conference plan, uh, we've added a number of additional or potential future connections um, so those are the dashed lines on this map uh, and how the larger kind of mile uh, county road grid begins to get subdivided again as development continues um, to break down that hierarchy of the larger uh, system into more local roadways. Um, in addition to uh, either existing roads or roads that have been on the future thoroughfare plan map for some time, we changed some of the functional classification of those. Uh, I think we kind of downgraded more roads than increased um, or up the, the classification in most instances. And then uh, identified a couple areas for potential overpasses um, over I-65. Again, uh, understanding that with where your current interchanges are, um, the feasibility or opportunity to create another interchange between any of those is, is unrealistic given spacing requirements, um, but opportunities to, again, improve that east-west connectivity at least uh, over the interstate. So that would be at um, Pushville Road or, or County Road 700 just south of Wordsville, and then uh, between County Line and Maine, um, it would connect Sierra and Keaton, so uh, a little bit north of um, South Park Boulevard, Boulevard there on the end of the business park over to is it is that the Ulta 
the beauty warehouse, I think, on the east side. Um, also uh, noted on this map are a number of um, future intersection improvements, uh, knowing that congestion issues are frequently occurring at intersections, not just along the, the main part of the roadway. Um, so those being the frequent congestion points and conflict points, both for vehicles um, and vehicles and pedestrians or cyclists. So uh, certainly an emphasis on that. In terms of the quality of life goals, uh, certainly growing recreational opportunities through new park spaces and expanded trail systems like I alluded to. Um, also uh, improvements to existing parks and certainly existing parks that serve um, residences in the, the nearby, nearby neighborhoods. Uh, made a lot of park improvements, certainly in the downtown area to Old City Park, Craig Park, um, Freedom Springs, things like that that serve uh, obviously a, a local need, but also as this kind of regional and economic development tool, um, but getting back to the focus on some of the neighborhood parks and investment there. Um, recognizing Old Town and existing neighborhoods as really the foundation of the community and the center for character, arts, and culture. Uh, and then as um, infill and redevelopment can happen and new development, supporting attainable housing while also recognizing it needs to fit with the character uh, and aesthetics of existing and surrounding neighborhoods. The quality of life map um, is primarily focused on uh, parks and trails. Um, again, uh, apologize for the, the line work not reading well here. Solid lines are existing trails, dashed lines are proposed trails, uh, a focus on a couple Key segments or, or corridors I'll point out. Um, one being kind of continuing a trail along uh, Pleasant Creek and building off the system that you have the downtown. So continuing that to the Northeast, um, which could connect through one of the focus areas, which is uh, adjacent to the airport and ultimately up to County Line Road. And then continuing facilities um, out of downtown to the West and then Northwest, ultimately to the community garden and, and Northwest Park in that area. Um, certainly facilities important along 31, uh, again, understanding that those are going to need to be NDOT led, but there are um, obviously NDOT improvements happening or planned uh, for 31 to the south in Johnson County that will include addition of uh, multi-use trails along there. So continuing those facilities to the north and then looking at the rail corridor as an opportunity to potentially create that um, regional kind of Johnson County trail that would connect to uh, New White and White and ultimately Franklin. The public safety pillar um, focuses on certainly continuing to grow emergency services alongside new development um, to continue the, the high level of service that you're already offering. Uh, one of the things we heard through the, the stakeholder engagement process was um, a concern that some of the current building, fire, and public safety codes um, didn't really have the teeth to uh, to result in compliance, um, and that sometimes the, the fees were minimal enough it was easy to pay them and to be a better uh, business or um, or property owner. So, uh, looking at reviewing those to again make sure that they are. Um, enforceable and respected. And then we heard uh, from the community this interest in um, improving communication. So obviously uh, everybody's starting to get information, share information in different ways and more of a reliance on social media, um, given challenges to um, local media and kind of decreasing or declining efforts related to that. So how can the city uh, improve communication with residents, but then also, um, you know, form or better establish some more regular communication to processes with regional partners to share information, plan projects, and um, leverage resources in that way. Uh, the public safety map focuses on um, what are primarily existing community facilities. Uh, but beginning to look at the need for uh, an additional fire station to the east as growth would continue in that area. Um, and then again, 
highlighting uh, parks, schools, and other um, potential future parks. And again, most of those are aligned with uh, natural features related to the floodplain, or that would be um, a challenge to develop anyway. So again, utilizing those natural features, incorporating them into the design of future development or future park spaces. And finally, the economic development pillar, um, so starting to attract uh, higher paying, higher skill jobs to Greenwood, uh, certainly continuing to support the local business economy and entrepreneurship that kept going in Old Town throughout the community. Uh, working with Simon Property Group, who we spoke to numerous times through this process to ensure that the model uh, remains vibrant and can adapt to changes as the you know kind of retail environment changes. Um, so being flexible there and uh, ensuring that high pro your remaining kind of high profile properties Certainly, um, with the amount of development that's happened since the, the current plan was created, there are not as many development sites in the community or near the community as there were. Um, so ensuring that those properties are preserved and protected for um, really high profile kind of commercial and industrial growth that adds uh, those high value jobs and um, tax base to the community. Our map in this chapter focuses on where those commercial um, and industrial and, and mixed use districts are, uh, as well as the opportunities in the focus areas there, but certainly um, aligned to your key north south corridors. And then uh, the focus group chapter. So, like I said, there are six of them um, the mall area, Old Town, uh, Airport Parkway area, so just west of the airport, the Main Street corridor east of I 65 the Main Street air um, kind of interchange area, and then the Wordsville corridor also east of 65. So each of these um, areas in the document has a, uh, a map uh, and then a series of kind of guiding principles that inform or um, could help inform the design of future development and redevelopment, as well as then some precedent imagery to again help um, you all and Gabe and his staff communicate the desired intent for these. Uh, the mall area focuses on um, some infill of uh, underutilized parking spaces. Um, we kind of constrained ourselves to what are uh, the Simon known properties for the most part. The mall is unique in that um, Penny zones, they're building a parking lot, Bon Mar owns the portion of the building. Uh, that has their store and their parking lot. So trying to, you know, understanding that um, as the department store anchors, they're going to want to preserve that visibility and parking. But um, on the larger site, there's certainly opportunities to introduce uh, additional green space, additional, additional bicycle and pedestrian connections. And again, just recognizing that um, aside from Black Friday, and even then, maybe not even on Black Friday, uh, there's a whole lot of parking that could be uh, better utilized and better value, provide more value of tax base to the city. Um, also, opportunities for uh, additional green space and connect, continuing the Madison Avenue um, trail uh, all the way to the mall. Most of this infill, again, um, could be mixed use, so retail or commercial businesses on the first floor and then apartments above. Uh, there's also even additional infill opportunity. Um, some of it, you know, we've got the floodplain on there, but as you look at what is uh, or what was the Sears Auto building in that space too, um, some opportunities there. Um, in terms of Old Town, a lot of this is uh, what's there in terms of built, existing building stock. Um, but there are certainly some key infill opportunities, uh, the parking lot immediately to our north, um, and other parking lots, some of which are public, some of which are private um, or, or church owned as we look east on Main Street, uh, and then towards the west past um, there are the post office building and beyond. Again, this is this is just conceptual. Uh, should um, private property owners 
want to sell or explore opportunities for infill or public private partnerships. This is just one scenario. We certainly heard and understand there are concerns about parking in the downtown area and that the city center parking lot um, serves a, a critical community need. We think there are opportunities to incorporate parking um, either below ground or other structured parking as part of uh, redevelopment projects and, and get to that with some of the guiding principles. Um, also uh, recommending, like I said earlier, some, some trail extensions through this area. And then knowing that there are um, flood hazard areas that come through here, again, not suggesting any buildings proactively be removed from the floodplain, but should they um, sustain uh, significant damage in a future flood event or um, be past their functional lifespan and need to be removed, that those areas should ultimately become a uh, green space given the floodplain or floodway in some instances. Um, other key kind of couple key points I'll, I'll mention here are just opportunities to uh, enhance pedestrian connectivity through the downtown. So um, should there be uh, development on the parking lot here, still um, using that or, or using that as an opportunity to make a good pedestrian connection from Madison um, over to, to Lincoln Street and, and ultimately to the park, um, as well as activating some alleys on the, the north side of Maine and, and just west of um, Madison there. And that they're, they're pretty tight and don't serve a great vehicular function anymore. Um, so those can be uh, pedestrian paths or used by uh, adjacent buildings and, and able to capture some outdoor space. This is the uh, airport area. So um, key, uh, key recommendation here is, is obviously connecting the existing uh, stubs of Airport Parkway, the, the southern stub there that's just north of uh, Main Street, uh, Oak and Barrel, and then the northern piece um, that provides access to the airport. Uh, making that connection would be a, a really nice um, additional north-south route in this area. And then using that new roadway as kind of the division between uh, some commercial, kind of flexible commercial businesses or airport-oriented businesses to the east, and then um, some, some varied residential uh, options to the west, scaling down to adjacent neighborhood, adjacent single family neighborhoods to respect that context. Uh, also a unique opportunity to kind of expand or pull the um, established grid street pattern into this area and continue it. Uh, also have the significant floodplain kind of through the middle of it, but that being a real great opportunity um, for green space. And then, like I said, that trail connection uh, from downtown and existing parks, ultimately up to County Line Road. Um, the, the, the green space at the uh, uh, southeast corner there um, is part of the runway protection zone, so that can't ever be uh, developed and, and will remain open. This is the East Main Street concept. Um, so to orient you, obviously the east-west street through the middle is uh, Main Street, and then the, the north-south. Oh. Um, the the north-south kind of Main Street through there would be Griffith. So uh, this kind of new um, mixed-use town center there on the north side of Main Street at Griffith Road. Uh, becoming this area to serve um, the existing and, and planned and forthcoming residential development in this area. Uh, that then kind of transitions and scales down to some uh, mixed or multifamily housing to the west before you get to the existing neighborhoods. Um, the blue on the north end is a, is a school owned property, so potential future school site. And then central to it is this really nice existing um, wooded area that, that could become a, an adjacent kind of feature park. 
Uh, again, this is conceptual and one of a number of scenarios um, that for, for how this area could be designed. But again, uh, the, the, the town center could shift a little bit to the east. Um, it could go a little north, although we think there's some benefit to visibility on Main Street. But it's this idea of how um, this general area can be oriented around this new uh, town center that would feature, you know, um, active public space uh, with first floor retail, restaurants, um, again, apartments connected to the trail network, connected to the park, close to the school, and just a really neat opportunity uh, on the east side. The Main Street and 65 Interchange uh, focuses less on new uses or um, a lot of new development. We do think there are maybe some longer term redevelopment opportunities, uh, but most of the recommendations here, and I know this, can, this gets a little busy with all the call outs, but are related to um, aesthetics. So cleaning up uh, this corridor from a visual standpoint, um, improving the uh, pedestrian and bicycle connection through here. There is the trail under the interstate uh, with NDOT looking at interchange modifications here in the not too distant future. That becomes an opportunity to widen Main Street under the interchange, get a trail on both sides, and then really um, start to look at how we incorporate uh, additional um, gateways, signage, landscape treatments, and really just enhance the welcome experience to Greenwood since this is such obviously a, a high profile um, interchange location. And then like I said, beyond that, um, as we look at the, you know, what was the red carpet in and that sign, site, excuse me, um, available for redevelopment. Uh, and then as maybe investments are made to properties or, or incremental reinvestment or redevelopment may occur, how do we clean up um, some of the transportation uh, access along Main Street, remove some curb cuts where it's warranted, uh, and hopefully improve that function in conjunction with what will likely need to be some intersection improvements at South Park um, or uh, Road intersection, and then also to the east. Um, at Commerce Harbor. And then finally, the um, Wordsville area, uh, just east of 65, again, an opportunity, uh, given the high profile location on the interstate for this kind of destination, uh, commercial or hospitality office uh, development that, that again, could include a mixed use center um, to incorporate uh, some different housing products in conjunction or in, in close proximity to what could be a um, future employment district. Again, kind of establishing or breaking down the larger grid street network um, and continuing existing uh, trail or shared use path facilities through the area and ultimately uh, to the sports park just to the west and then additional potential green spaces um, on the north side of Orangeville Road and then ultimately um, east of Griffith, again, with the, the flood plan through this area. So important to protect it for high value, high profile development, which I think you all and, and the council um, certainly have been doing. So that's it for the focus areas. Uh, just a couple of notes on implementation. Uh, obviously, the plan itself is um, a guide to be used as you would evaluate future development potential, but it does not include the specific rules and regulations that are embodied uh, in the Unified Development Ordinance and zoning map. Um, so one of the key implementation uh, recommendations is going to be some amendments to the Unified Development Ordinance to support the goals that are embodied in the comprehensive plan. Um, so this is things like removing barriers to downtown redevelopment, uh, creating a, a pure mixed use district. Right now mixed use is allowed in Old Town and it's allowed in the commercial medium and commercial large districts, but only as a, as a percentage of 
um, for the, the residential use, I think can't be more than 50%, um, which is kind of tough. Normally in more traditional mixed use development, we're looking at two or three floors of apartments over one floor of retail. So that 50-50 ratio could be a challenge. Um, again, other uh, potential barriers to redevelopment, certainly on the mall site, that is zone four, and right? So zone four, auto-oriented commercial development. But as we would look to incorporate uh, more housing units or more walkable framework in there, may need to change the zoning from the large setbacks um, to uh, something that allows uh, buildings to be closer to the street and so on. Allows, allowing for more housing types and more districts. So again, are there opportunities to allow duplexes or townhomes in some of your residential districts beyond just purely single family? Uh, more incentives for preserving existing trees and natural features on the site. Again, as we want those preserved and incorporated into new development, um, a lot of times it, it requires offering care. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to, to just clear the site, but uh, we certainly want to see those preserved. Um, mechanisms to enforce access management or, or cleaning up some of the access management issues, like I said, as redevelopment may occur. And then from a zoning map standpoint, um, we don't recommend changing the zoning map to kind of get out ahead of development. Certainly, we still want rezoning petitions um, to come to you all for recommendation to the council and ultimately, ultimately be approved that way. But we do think there are some instances where um, existing development that is anticipated to stay for some time doesn't necessarily align very well with what some of the existing zoning is, which can, again, be... Um, reinvestment in those properties difficult if it's going to trigger something. Uh, so lower, you know, reducing those barriers or hurdles when the uh, property owners want to do basic maintenance or additional landscaping or a building expansion that's going to have tax about taxable um, assessment uh, and, and not create those hurdles. So with that, you know, kind of the, the key initiatives um, that I think kind of run through the plan and in a lot of ways cross um, across multiple pillars or, or cover multiple goals and strategies and, and align with some of the key things we heard throughout the engagement process. Um, certainly continuing transportation improvements um, to enhance safety and reduce congestion, uh, improving the bicycle and pedestrian network. I didn't touch on it earlier, but certainly um, crossings uh, of 31, we know that's very important as well um, as 135 and other uh, major thoroughfares. Supporting redevelopment and reinvestment um, as, as best the city can, while obviously ensuring that it's appropriate. Uh, growing public safety and other community services in conjunction with population and job increases. Using new growth to diversify housing and job opportunities, um, as I mentioned. Uh, using utility investments as a, as a way to guide development and manage the pace of growth. And then again, uh, ensuring that the UDO reflects the community's vision for new development. So um, I'll touch on next steps, but then certainly happy to answer any questions. Uh, as Gabe said, we have a public presentation at the library on Wednesday at uh, 6 p.m. Would certainly... Um, encourage and welcome anyone listening, anyone here, uh, to join us for that. Uh, it's going to be similar to this. It will be a little expanded. It will go through um, some of the more introductory, what is the conference plan, why are we updating it now, highlight the process we took that I've kind of skipped over this evening. Uh, but the plan, um, the draft is available on the project website, plangreenwood.com. There is also a link on the project website that goes to a community survey that kind of allows um, everyone to provide comments specific to the chapters or more general, but we wanted to create an easy way for people to provide input uh, beyond emailing or calling Gabe's office or using the comment form on the website. So I would encourage everyone to check that out. Um, we will be providing an update to the uh, council at their August 5th meeting. Um, and all of that is in hopes of uh, receiving comment, making the necessary changes, and having an adoption draft on August 12th 
so that we can come back before you at your second August meeting for our public hearing. Um, depending on how, on how that goes, if we need to uh, if we get a recommendation or need to continue it, then we will schedule the council adoption accordingly. Is that good for me? Yeah, that's good. Thank, thank you, Adam. I, that was a very nice overview. Um, this is not necessarily a, a, a public hearing. That will be on Wednesday that we have time for uh, public comments, public questions. Uh, but just for the uh, plant commission here, uh, do you guys have any uh, direct feedback you'd like to provide to HWC and to planning staff? Uh, if you've had time to look over the comprehensive plan on our website, you just have any uh, general thoughts or or um, a perception of, of how you felt reading it, if it was uh, user-friendly, um, if we were missing anything major that you thought. Uh, I know one of the, the things I've heard, and I kind of made a comment with uh, HWC, is we have been hearing uh, people desiring a, a neighborhood commercial uh, component. Uh, so trying to see how our comprehensive plan can encourage that, but then also not end up with a undesirable commercial use uh, next to someone's home. So we're trying to work through some of those things, but if you have any uh, feedback for Adam or for me, we would love uh, to hear that. Tonight? It could be tonight, yes. <laughs> Let, I'd like to start by congratulating a well-prepared plan. This is my second trip to master plan for community, so this is a good plan. I really like the effort and the involvement of the community, the time you've taken to hear everyone's views and ideas, putting into a nice comprehensive plan. I have one thing that I'd like to recommend is, will there be, recommend the extension of redevelopment on the corridors on Main from downtown East and North from downtown on Madison, redevelopment, new businesses, more retail, maybe more housing, uh, I didn't see that that kind of extension of, of promoting that kind of development over time. Is that something that you thought about at one point or another to include, or was that something you decided wasn't necessary at this level? Could I, could I ask a clarifying question? Are you referring to the built form of our Main and Madison intersection, or are you talking uh, just New all businesses and housing in general. In general, all the full length of Madison up to the mall <laughs> and from downtown on Main going east to the intersection of 65. I thought maybe that is there an opportunity for redevelopment in that area of creating more retail, more businesses? And would that be something that you would be promoting as part of the comprehensive plan? That was my only issue for the year. Sure. I thought that was something that could have been <clears throat> developed. Yeah, um, I'll say I I think um, the plan certainly advocates for redevelopment more central, potential redevelopment more central to the downtown area, like we showed, and then also closer to sixty five, but that in between segment, which I think maybe you're referring to where a lot of the houses have been converted to businesses already. Yes. Um, or I would guess, I'm not 100% positive, what are still residents is probably more of those are rentals than not. Again, just given the kind of prominence of Main Street from a transportation standpoint. I don't, I don't think we've heard through the process that that piece needs to kind of change that much. And I would say probably that's the same for um, Madison coming out of downtown before you would get to the mall. So I'm certainly not opposed to it, but I don't think, uh, I don't think we heard as much or much at all about those pieces in our earlier engagement efforts. Well, I just thought I'd bring it up because I thought those are nice corridors for upgrading and improved quality. So I just thought to bring it up. So I don't mean to impose. No, not at all. No, and then 
I will say just as far as streetscaping, uh, Main Street, we are currently working on uh, streetscaping going all the way out to I-65. Uh, so more of that uh, downtown Main Street and Madison uh, style extending out uh, past I-65 with uh, pedestrian trails, uh, filling in those sidewalk gaps, removing some of the sidewalks, upgrading them to uh, multifunctional trail. Uh, but yeah, I think our downtown plan uh, really focused between Market Plaza, the south end of Market Plaza uh, by Serena Way uh, to Broadway and from uh, really, there, there is a pedestrian bridge proposed over uh, 31 on Main Street. So kind of from 31 uh, out to South Meridian Street. Uh, but so it is a little bit more of a centralized downtown area, uh, not shown in this plan. The city does own some property uh, out by the, the railroad tracks. Uh, that would be uh, a place that we look to uh, infill or redevelop at some point, uh, but the comprehensive plan really focused more centrally on the core of downtown. Okay. Yep. Um, I just wanted to provide a little bit of, I, I think this is really, really wonderful comprehensive plan. It provides a really good blueprint for our future. It um, includes a lot of those pillars that obviously we need. Um, I looked at it when you sent a gig for us to, to review the Diversity in photos clearly needs to be in there. There's there's very little, I don't know who actually does that, but it looks like we're just a lily white town and a little more than that. So just, you know, show a little bit more diversity. Um, all ages, all ethnicities, all backgrounds. Um, being a statistician that I am, uh, an epidemi former epidemiologist, I'm worried a little bit about the stats. If this isn't gonna be finalized until later in this year, the most recent stats I saw in there, which were only cited a few times for 2021, oftentimes cited 2020. I understand U.S. census statistics, but there's other stats that could be utilized, um, and I know that we, we can pull them out all the times. Um, for example, 63,000, we're looking at 67,000 right now in 2024. Um, if this is finalized until the end of this year, we start utilizing it next year, right, or 27, perhaps, we're just going to be pretty outdated. Um, the last thing I really, and I forgot to mention this last time that I, we had a, an internal, like, just, well, we were at the library and we were at the uh, planning. Um, I don't see a lot of emergency planning in there, like, you know, medical management emergency planning. We're looking at the future of our city, um, not that we need to go into proposals or anything like that, but what are the plans for emergencies? We saw what happened with the tornadoes. Um, what happens when there is, if we continue to grow from a 67,000 city, to 127,000, what the hell are we going to do? True. You know, so, yeah. Great job, otherwise. Thank you. And yeah, so when when we started this process and pulled all of the demographic and socioeconomic statistics, 2021 data was all that was the newest available. I know 22,000 now. Speakers, thank you. Thank you. And um, if you don't already have my contact information, Gabe does. Uh, so happy to talk about any other questions or comments. Um, certainly, as within the, in the coming weeks, uh, would would welcome any additional feedback. Um, and the sooner the better. Yeah. Not uh, not going back. Definitely. And please feel free if you guys have. Uh, detailed suggestions. Uh, Terry mentioned some like emergency planning. If there's something you specifically would like to see in our public safety uh, chapter, uh, we're definitely still looking through that. I do know a lot of uh, emergency planning is done more at county level, which Greenwood is partners with them and is a part of that. But if there's a specific um, map or, or thing that you would like to see, please uh, feel free to mention that to us. One of the things that we'll be adding is our um, tornado siren uh, map to our community facility map or our, our public safety chapter. We'll also be looking out to the future growth of where those sirens will need to be in the future. So if a development is coming through, 
it's in an area where that sound buffer from one of our uh, sirens does not reach. Uh, we'll have that developer uh, set aside space or an easement for another tornado siren. So we are still uh, working through these chapters and if there's something specific, feel free to reach out to Adam or, or me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, is there any new business from the floor? Seeing none, uh, before you do you repeat your announcement, I, I just wanted to say uh, on behalf of the uh, commission, I wanted to thank the members of the community who came tonight uh, to see this. I think it's really important to uh, get this information out to as many people as possible and tell your friends and neighbors that uh, Wednesday is coming. Really good. Keep it, keep it up. Thank you very much. The other announcement is the Wednesday. Yes. Uh, so Wednesday, uh, July 24th, 6 p.m., we have our public presentation. So you guys have a little bit of a pre preview of it. But uh, as I said, it will go a little bit more in depth. And at the end of that time, there will be time for the public uh, to ask questions, provide feedback, provide comments. And then I would encourage you guys to check out our web page. Also get on there. Uh, fill out that survey, tell your friends, other people about it. Um, we'll probably have a, a couple of cameras there as well. Uh, so we can maybe try and get a, a couple uh, more photos, uh, try to uh, get our, our uh, maybe a few of those photos swapped out if we have got repeat people in them. So um, just invite everyone you know, and we look forward to seeing you guys there. And the next meeting of the advisory planning commission will be the second uh, Monday in August, that's August 12th. One more announcement. One more announcement. This Friday is our very first final Friday um, in Old Town Greenwood, hosted by Restore Old Town Greenwood. So Friday evening, all of the, most of the businesses in and around Old Town Greenwood are going to be hosting specials. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have all kinds of things. So we highly encourage you and your families and friends to come out and join us. Are there any scheduled road closures for this? No road closures this time around. Some people will be happy about that. Some people say so. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements? Uh, is there any other motion? Move to adjourn. Be adjourned. Be adjourned.